Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we have an exciting tutorial for all the space enthusiasts out there and we'll be diving into the basics of using NASA's general mission analysis tool, commonly known as GMAT. GMAT is a powerful and free software that can help you analyze and plan your own space missions. So let's get started. First things first, ensure you have GMAT downloaded from the link in the description below. GMAT is designed to model, optimize, and estimate spacecraft trajectories in flight regimes ranging from low Earth orbit to lunar applications and interplanetary trajectories and other deep space applications. It has been used as a tool for missions such as LCROSS and Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, as well as Artemis. Now, GMAT is underpinned by a programming language called MATLAB. And in GMAT, we can either use the GUI or the scripting interface to build our missions. And typically the GUI is more intuitive to use, but is limited in some of its functionality. And there are additional features only accessible via the scripting interface. By building a mission in the GUI, GMAT will compile the script automatically. Conversely, you can write the script and then run it through GMAT and see the changes made in the GUI. For this reason, GMAT is kind of described as a batch execution model. And that basically means that you run your script through GMAT, get an output, adjust the script, and then keep running until you converge upon a solution. In this tutorial, we'll run through the GUI of GMAT and propagate an orbit similar to that of the International Space Station. So let's get started. Let's quickly go over the tools at the heading bar at the top. Let's close this. And if you hover over each of the uh, icons, you can see that GMAT tells you exactly what they do. Here you can see we have our new mission. Uh, we've got copy, cut and paste. We have the run button and pause, stop, screenshot, close all, close, some information and help, our animation tools. But the most important thing here, and notably the thing you need to pay attention to, is the GUI script sync status. If this is not synchronized, your mission will not be running the most recent changes you've made. So this basically means that if it isn't saying synchronized, it means you need to save your mission prior to running it. Analysts model space missions in GMAT by first creating resources such as spacecraft, propagators, estimators, and optimizers. And this is the window we are in now. There are two main types of resources. The first are physical resources, and these include things like your spacecraft, thrusters, burns, and planets. And the second are your analysis resources. Since GMAT is an optimization tool, it is underpinned by numerical methods and solvers. So the analysis resources include things like differential correctors, propagators, optimizers, and things like that. In addition, we also have your graphics, reports, and plots. And you can think of the resources set up as all of the ingredients you need to build your mission. So you can see the resource categories in the tree on the left. And let's go over some of the most important resources. And throughout our projects, you'll gain experience working with different areas of GMAT and its features. But for now, let's start with the basics. You can see we already have a spacecraft added here. Let's rename it to something else. So if I right click and click rename, I can type in International Space Station because that's the spacecraft that we will be simulating today. So it says here that it's not a valid name and that's because um, since it's underpinned by code, we need to make sure that there are no spaces in between um, our words, our characters. So I can replace those spaces with underscores. So now that we have the International Space Station, we can double click on it. And here you can see um, the spacecraft uh, window. And we have loads of different tabs in this resource, but the orbit tab is the most important tab. Uh, we, can, we also have other properties which we can apply to our spacecraft. And we can find our spacecraft space, uh, state vectors from a selected list of descriptors. We have the Cartesian state vectors here, uh, which will be familiar from the restricted two-body equation. Uh, but we also have our Keplerian elements, 
if we click on the state type, uh, we can see all of the different descriptors here. Um, we'll go to Keplerian because that is nine times out of 10, the best ones to use. So we will be simulating the ISS. So let's ensure that we have the correct data here. So we're gonna change our epoch format to UTC Gregorian. And you can see here we have a date and a time. Um, so for this purpose, I'll be putting the 10th of July, 2023. At 13.03 and three seconds. So that's our epoch. Now we have our Keplerian elements. So we have the semi-major axis, eccentricity, inclination, right ascension of the ascending node, argument of perigee, and our true anomaly. So the ISS is in has a semi-major axis of 6,738 kilometers. Its eccentricity is essentially in a circular orbit, um, but I'll put the closest to exact value here. Our inclination is 51.6 degrees. Our ascending node is at 212.7 degrees. Our argument of perigee is 106.5. And our mean anomaly uh, is roughly 33. So here um, are the parameters that I've inputted. I can click apply. So epoch is not an allowed value. Let me change that. There we go. I think I had a space in there somewhere. So apply and then OK. So that's our spacecraft setup. You can see that the other tabs we have here in the resource tree are burns, formations, ground station hardware. Um, and for burns, you can add impulsive or finite burns to perform orbital maneuvers. Um, i.e. moving your spacecraft from one orbit to another, but we'll cover this in another video. Uh, the propagator setup. So the propagators um, are really important and they essentially describe how um, we will be solving uh, the problems uh, for our mission and the analysis that's undertaken. So. The propagator essentially uh, defines the spacecraft at a point in the future. And this is underpinned by um, a numerical method. So generally, uh, the integrator here, it describes the mathematical models which will solve the problems. And there are other integrators which are more suitable for solving particular problems. So you can see we have a list here. Um, the propagators are added to the resource tab and the number of propagators generally depends on your mission operations and the central bodies that are involved. So here you can see we have the central body as Earth and these are all the parameters which describe the central body um, and the primary body around which this propagator is solving its problem. So you can see that um, if we are just doing an Earth orbit, we only need one propagator whose central body is defined as the Earth. But if we're going to the moon, we would need another propagator centered around Luna. And if we were going to Mars, we would need one centered around the sun, as well as one centered around the Mars. Uh, so here you can see we have also uh, parameters in which we can describe our central body, our primary body. Um, so we can apply gravity, uh, which is quite useful. We'll leave this as default. Um, degree here describes the uh, this how spherical um, our central body is. So if we set this to degree zero and order four, it will be perfectly uh, spherical. Um, and we can choose different gravity files, but it's best to set it as uh, default. And we can also apply atmospheres and things like that. 
And this all just alludes to additional functionality which uh, GMAT has. Uh, the output resource is very valuable and it allows us to configure what visual information our script will relay back to us. And GMAT will always give you the default orbit view and the default ground track plot. Uh, but you can add things such as uh, report files, uh, figures, and additional views uh, by right clicking, going to add, and selecting the relevant uh, outputs which you want to put into your resource. Um, let's open up default orbit view. So here you can see um, in the end we will get a plot of uh, our orbit and this basically describes how we want the information to be presented. Uh, so we can see here we have plot options. Uh, we can choose to enable or disable stars and constellations. Um, we can draw different axes and grids. Uh, a sun line will draw a vector that points directly to the sun uh, from uh, your central body. Uh, we also have um, the target spacecraft, so uh, in this case it's only one, which is the ISS, um, and the celestial objects, um, which will be at the center of the view. And then we can also describe the camera position. So um, here it's set at 30,000 kilometers um, away from the um, X direction. And this is the scale factor in the view direction is pointing towards the Earth. And the view up definition um, is set as a z-axis, the positive z-axis, uh, which is quite intuitive. And you'll see kind of the um, how that presents its information later when we run the, uh, the simulation. So I can click apply here. Um, I've chose to disable stars and constellations just to allow things uh, to be a little bit more clear. So now we can move on to the mission tab and the mission tab is where we define our mission sequence and this is done using the resources we have previously set up in the resource tab. The GUI allows us to call different functions here which allow us to perform the analysis we want for our mission. Uh, so here you can see we click, right click, append and these are the functions which we can call. Uh, for now we will, um, we will just use the propagate function. Um, which is already set up here as default. Um, you can choose to rename the propagate function. Um, I could just call this ISS orbit. And um, if I double click on here, you can see we have um, a propagate mode and the propagators in the spacecraft as well as the stopping conditions. So uh, the propagator model, as I mentioned earlier, it predicts a satellite's behavior at a future point in time. So here we can select our propagator and the relevant spacecraft. Um, our stopping conditions also define when we want the propagation to stop. And typically this is at the end of a maneuver or mission operation event. So in this case, um, our, our propagator is set as our default prop, which was outlined before as the central body. Um, so if you click on these three little dots to the side, it gives you the available selections you can make. And here we only have one propagator uh, from our resource tab. And we also have one spacecraft. Um, our stopping conditions. Uh, so you can see it's selected our spacecraft as the ISS. And currently it's set as a default of elapsed seconds and 12,000 seconds. Um, in this case, we'll try and do one complete orbit um, sorry, we'll try and do one full day of orbits. So you can see we have all these different object properties and stopping conditions. Um, we'll navigate to elapsed days, which is here. And in order to make the selection, and this is the same in most of the um, uh, GMAT interfaces, you make the selection and you have to click this um, this arrow to bring it over and you can see now that it's updated um, as elapsed days. Once we've done that we can click OK and we'll set the elapsed days to 1. Uh, we can also choose to override the colour for this segment so if you have different 
um, like I mentioned earlier, we have different maneuvers and different mission operation events, and we want to define them as different colors so that we can clearly see um, in the visualization tool um, and the visualization output at the end. Um, we can change the colors here as well. So in this case, I'll change it to teal. Click OK, apply. OK. And uh, let's click run and see what we get. So here you can see that um, it's put our um, our default orbit view as the center here. You can see we have the equatorial plane, uh, which is kind of this grid structure. And you can see that we have achieved our target inclination. And uh, the view up definition was in the Z axis, which is here. So that defines the, uh, the orientation of the camera. And you can see that we've uh, propagated um, our orbit across one complete day. We started at the 10th of July 2023 at this time, and then now we're at the 11th of July 2023. Um, so you can play your animation back by clicking Start Animation here. And it will run itself around. And you can click Stop, and you can play slow animation so it'll go slower but it will always restart from um, the beginning of the animation so now I can save and I can put this as a script file so I'll call it um, International Space Station save and uh, now you can see that our uh, script status is synchronized so one of the things that I will show is um, this was the GUI interface, and as soon as I clicked run there, um, GMAT automatically compiles this into a script. And if I double click on the scripts, you can see that it's put all the information and the changes that I've made um, into the MATLAB uh, programming language. And GMAT will run, run through this. And this is a very simple mission. Um, and you can see that it outlines very clearly um, your resources, so spacecraft, force models, propagators, and these are all things which I um, I, I opened up um, in the resources tab. So here you can see our adjustments to the uh, orbit view, ground track, and then the mission sequence begins here. And we can see we only have one propagator, uh, but that kind of just shows that um, you can either choose to write this all from scratch and run it that way, save sync run, or you can use it, um, do it conversely in the GUI and get the same thing back out. If you navigate online and look for missions to run, nine times out of 10 people will uh, have the scripts available and you can run these scripts through uh, GMAT and get the output that they uh, that, that person got as well. So if you wanted to start your own script, uh, you just click new script here and um, you can begin typing your script out. So that concludes uh, this tutorial and we've just scratched the surface of using NASA GMAT and there's so much more to explore from advanced mission planning to complex analysis. But thanks for joining us today. And if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting space related content. Uh, don't forget to visit our website, hivespace.uk for amazing space projects and developing space skills and improving your employability for this sector. Thanks for watching and let's do space right together. Thank you.